Thank you so much for taking Part 5 of Military Consumer Toolkit. Part 1 was spending and budgeting. Part 2 is earn. Part 3 is borrow. Part 4 is save and invest. Part 5 is protect. Each video in this series has about a 13 minute introduction that's basically the same as video 1. Part 5, protect, I have broken it up into two videos. Part 5A covers scams, ID theft, and the credit report. Thank you so much again for taking this class. This is the introduction to this particular video and it talks about why the Military Consumer Toolkit was created, its purpose and how it will help military families and why this matters so much to the Federal Trade Commission and the military. Um, my family has served in the military. My uncle was in the Navy during the Korean conflict and my stepfather was in the Air Force for 30 years. My husband was a Marine. My daughter was a Marine and she served in Desert Storm. I wanted to serve in the Marine Corps, but that didn't come to pass. I'm small and sickly. So, but I just want to try to give back to those I care about so much. And so I put these, this video together to be of assistance to uh, our military family and friends. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I had a joining forces video in this segment of this video and I've had to take it out because of the music or something on YouTube it was copyrighted so I just took it out I am saddened to know that the website is no longer active we still need the resources that was provided by this organization even though it was an initiative started by Dr. Jill Biden and First Lady Michelle Obama it is still needed. I hope someone out there listening to this video will move this wonderful organization to the private sector. All of the businesses and all of the people that were involved in the companies. I know there's protocol and everything with various administrations and all of that stuff. But it just is mind boggling to me that this administration has removed this website and all of the things that were being done for our military families. So if there's someone listening, please do something. Maybe you can talk to Ms. Obama if you're in that area or Dr. Biden if you're in that kind of area. But this needs to be reinstated in the private sector, in the communities at large. It does not need to be an initiative that can be turned on and off because the needs are not turned on and off. I don't know what I can do. I'm just a lowly retired person, but those that have power, this is one time you could use your power for great things, absolutely great things. I'm Jessica Rich, Director of Consumer Protection at the Federal Trade Commission. And I'm Technical Sergeant James Mulhern. When the Department of Defense said that financial readiness is a big part of military preparedness, we listened. When you know how to manage your money and how to spot a ripoff, you're more financially solid. That keeps you mission ready at home and abroad. That's why the Department of Defense, the Federal Trade Commission, and others teamed up to make military.consumer.gov your tool for financial readiness. We are proud to offer our uniformed service members and families quick mobile tips that won't slow you down. Want to buy a car, manage your money during deployment, or continue your education? Get started right from your phone at military.consumer.gov. Before you open your wallet, Check out Military Consumer. For all our members of the uniformed services, knowledge is the first line of defense for you and your family. Visit military.consumer.gov, your tool for financial readiness. The purpose of this class is to help military families and military personnel to have good tools to make good financial decisions because wrong decisions can have a long-term effect on family life, 
mission readiness, and the service member's security clearance. Working with the Department of Defense, the Federal Trade Commission came up with this program and it's so important because they want you to be able to make solid financial decisions that will not impact you and your family in a negative way. This program seeks to help you answer these questions. Who will handle my finances during deployment? What should I know when buying a car? Often we think that's an easy purchase, but some of those contracts can be detrimental to your finances and can cause you some serious financial harm. And also, can I use my military training to further my goals? As you saw in the video from Joining Forces, that is very relevant and possible. Why does this matter? Why is this so important? Why does the military seek to help those families and personnel to understand more clearly the concept of debt? It's because of the survey they did and the studies they have found that the average military family has more debt than assets. The purpose of this class is to help you give you the tools so that you can make good decisions on your assets and not acquire a lot of debt. Continuing with why this matters, the challenges of military life can affect the service member's finances as well as the service member's family. You know, it hurts everyone when things are off balance. Frequent transitions and changes can cause you to have problems straightening out different debts and obligations in one location when you move into another. Many service members have little financial experience. That was my father. When he came into the military, he was taken advantage of. I know of a couple of car purchases he made that really did not turn out well. And the bad part about it, these things have long-term consequences. These things can follow you when you leave the military. This whole program is designed to give you the know-how and the keys of making good, smart financial decisions. In this topic, Topic 5, I have included a great deal of videos on various topics that are related to PROTECT. I added the videos so that you would hear from the actual Federal Trade Commission the actual processes on how things are done and how certain kind of scams work as you see the video played out. So I hope that this will be a benefit to you because some of these scams are happening right now and I just want to make sure that you have clear insight and understanding on how the scams work. As you can see, they go on with more videos. And I think the one that really uh, helps me understand the importance of Protect is all of the things you learn about networks, security for your PCs and your, and your phone. These things are very important. So pay attention to these and watch these videos. And if necessary, take notes, you know, and play them again. That's why I created this video so that you could actually, you know, rewind and play it again. I do not want you to be tricked. Ways to avoid scams. The best way for us to avoid scams is to have knowledge and insight on how they work. So when we are exposed to it, we will be prepared. So here are some things the FTC recommend we do. It says beware of people or companies that do one of the following. Ask for money or personal information over the phone. Just out of the blue, somebody you don't know. Remember now, these are scams. Use a recorded sales pitch. You know, that's those robocall things we get. And then ask you to make payment via a wire service or a reloadable credit card. This is something that please don't do. This was big in California for a while and the 
Pacific Gas and Electric, people were getting these calls that their bills were due. And then if you looked at your caller ID, it showed the number two PG&E. So it was really crazy at a point. But the thing that gave it away was the fact that they asked you to go to Walgreens, buy one of those money cards, load two or three hundred dollars on the money card, and then call them back and give them the code off the back of the card. Yeah that that's something's wrong with that picture but it got a lot of people and another thing is they will ask you to wire them payment for the bill the bills you know you don't pay your bills sending a western union so these are some things that should create a red flag so you'll know that this is definitely not reliable if you in doubt call the company don't use the number on your phone to call back actually find the number maybe on your bill or something Okay, another one they will ask you to do is to deposit a check and wire money back. They will send you some kind of crazy fake check, and then they'll have you deposit a check and then wire them part of the money. Don't do that because the check is fake. If you cash the check, the bank will give you the money. It's not good. That's what confuses people. The way the federal law is, when you put one of those checks in, the the federal law requires the bank to deposit the money in your checking account by two days. A lot of times the check doesn't clear for three or four days. But once that check actually goes through the system and it shows that it's bogus, then the bank is going to withdraw that money from your checking account or savings account or wherever you put it. So you've already wired these crazy people money and now you're out of the face value of that check. Stop and check it out. Google these people, you know, or whatever browser you use to find out if they have any kind of footprint. And then you could also put the word scam or uh, some other <laughs> some other complaint or review next to the name in your URL when you're searching the Internet form. And then talk to somebody you trust, you know, ask them about it, you know, get some advice and do your due diligence so you don't get taken advantage of because you're the one who have to follow through that's the key you're totally in control it's up to you to reject it or follow through with it now this little spinning one over here is really good it lets you know that the FTC has all this wonderful information you can either even go on their website and sign up for free scam alerts and they have reports of scams this that other people have reported and it's an encouragement for you to report it as well because they do make a difference i'm telling you they get so much money back for consumers every year where millions of dollars have been returned to consumers but well, we have to be a group you know we have to protect one another in this thing We've seen a great rise in the last year on money transfer frauds. Uh, oftentimes, people will get phone calls uh, from, a, from a relative, someone who claims to know a relative, for someone who tells them they've won a prize, for someone who tells them they've got a wonderful business opportunity. And the key is, at some point, they have to wire money to someone they don't know. And what we're trying to tell the public is, if you're ever asked to wire money to someone you don't know, it's likely a scam. Stop, think, and make sure that the person that you are, you think you're uh, sending money to is someone who's legitimate, someone who in fact is a relative, or someone who you have a pre-existing relationship with. The, the problem is that money, money wire scams come in all shapes and sizes. We see scams that we call the grandparent scams. These are phone calls from people who purport to know a grandchild or even from a grandchild saying that they're in trouble in a foreign city or in a remote place and they need money quickly. And then the caller suggests sending money by wire. And so money is sent by wire to a friend, someone who claims to be a friend of a relative or a grandchild. The money is transferred and it disappears. Once it's wired, uh, it, it evaporates. There's no way for you to get it back. Um, and we're seeing a, a real rise in those kinds of scams. Other kinds of scams are what we call the prize scams. 
you're called up, you're told that you've won a, a prize, all you need to do is give them uh, to, to wire some money and then they will send you, or send you the prize uh, or they'll, they'll, they'll ask you to send them a check so they have information about your checking account um, and they will drain your money. And so uh, these kinds of scams take all kinds of forms, but the bottom line rule is that if you're asked to wire money to someone you don't know, it's almost certainly a scam. One scam we're seeing a lot of, wire scams, starts with you getting a check from someone you don't know. And as soon as you deposit that check, and that person will be asking you to use that check for some of your own purposes, and then to wire them some money back. The problem is the bank has to clear your check within a couple of days, even before it's certain that the check is valid. And if, and this happens all the time, if you, you wire money back thinking there's money in your account and it turns out, as it often does, that the check is a fake, you, not the bank, are liable for those overdrafts. So people are looking for work and will get call from someone who says, for instance, they've been selected to be a mystery shopper and they will soon get a check for thousands of dollars that will pay not only their salary, but will pay them to go shop at, at stores, at, at sort of stores that are, that are uh, available everywhere. They'll cash the check, the bank will clear the check because the bank doesn't have any choice, and then they'll go out, spend some money, and wire money back to their employer, or so they think. But they're not wiring back the employer's money because that check was fake. What they're doing is they're wiring money they don't have but they will be liable for, and they will end up in debt as a result of this. Let me wait, make one thing clear. Money transfers are a useful way to get money to people you know and you've had dealings with in the past quickly and efficiently. What we're worried about is using money transfers to send money to people you don't know or haven't had any dealings with in the past. That's a red flag that oftentimes is not a false alarm. So suppose you've fallen prey to one of these scams and you sent, uh, you sent a wire transfer to someone you don't know or you've cashed a check that turns out to be fake and sent a wire transfer based on that. The first thing you should do is report that incident to the wire transfer company so it can conduct an investigation. Then please file a complaint with the Federal Trade Commission. You can do that either through our website at ftc.gov or you can do it by phone at 1-877-FTC-HELP. Many of us want to have more energy, be more organized, or simply save money. Maybe it's a new vitamin, a colored coated calendar, or an all-purpose kitchen gadget. It could be almost anything. So when you hear about a free trial that could let you try a product before committing to buy it, well, what have you got to lose? Sometimes there's a downside to those offers. Some companies use free trials to turn you into a long-term customer rather than a trial subscriber. Other companies may use free trials as a way to sign you up for other products than the ones you wanted to try. They might hide the terms deep within the fine print that allows them to bill you every month until you cancel. And that means they've enrolled you to receive other products, sometimes lots of products, which in turn can cost you lots of money you hadn't budgeted for. There are other things that might cause a headache if you're not careful. How can you avoid the cost that might be hiding in some free trial programs? First, research the company online. See what other people are saying about their free trials and about their service. Complaints from other customers are a red flag. Second, if a box is pre-checked for you, uncheck it. That little check mark can be the symbol that gives the company the green light to continue the offer past the free trial or to sign you up for additional items, which would make that free trial offer anything but. Third, mark your calendar. Your free trial probably has a time limit. 
and once it passes without you telling them to cancel your order, you may be on the hook for more than you bargained for. Fourth, read your credit card statements carefully to make sure you're not being charged for something you didn't order. Okay, so what happens if a free trial enrolls you without your permission? Here's what to do. Contact the merchant directly for help to sort out the situation. If that doesn't work, call your credit card company to dispute the charge. Your goal is to have the credit card company reverse the charge because you didn't actively order the additional merchandise. They say the best things in life are free, and free trials can be great. But won't you feel good knowing that you've done everything you can to get exactly what you want? To learn more about free trial offers, visit ftc.gov slash free trials. If you've been charged for a free trial offer, report it to the FTC at ftc.gov slash complaint. We're the Federal Trade Commission, helping consumers spot, stop, and avoid scams. The couple of videos you've just seen shows the power of choice. If it's something to do with identity theft, a lot of times we are powerless in that thing because people spend all their time trying to figure out some way to get your information, to compromise your identity, to be you, and to take advantage of your identity. But when it comes to some of these scams where you have to be a crucial part, how you respond can save you and someone else as well. You have to consent to become the victim in some of these scams. Some of the stuff people do in scams and fraud is beyond our control. But as we look at some more videos about the scams in this particular um, segment of the toolkit, you will see that many of them you can actually save yourself from and someone else just by how you respond. Okay, monitoring your credit report. This is your financial history. Everything you've done financially is on this credit report. You create it by the things you do. So you always want to make sure that you get the free credit report that you're entitled to every year. You're entitled to one free credit report every year from annualcreditreport.com. Do not go to these other little crazy websites. I see this thing on thing by Credit Karma and all these other people. Nah, you don't have to do none of that. Just go to annualcreditreport.com and they will send you your uh, credit report. And you don't need to worry about your credit score. You can go over there to your PFM and they can get you your credit score. So don't buy into all these different things that people want you to do to get at you, to get at your money. And then you could have the credit reporting agencies put on an active duty alert if you deployed or you're out of the states. This will help protect your credit. For It stays on there for at least one year. Now, whatever statements you get in the mail, your bank statements, your credit card statements, you want to look at them and to find out and make sure that the charges are there. I'm, I got my account set up with like an alert. My credit union sends me alert. I set it up so that if there's a transaction greater than $25, I get an email on my phone immediately for my credit card or my debit card. So that's something, too, you might want to look at, too. Now, OPM data breach, you can check to see if you're eligible for this monitoring service that they provide. So this was started back in 2015 when hackers stole the personal data of millions of the current and former federal employees, including active duty service members and veterans. So you might want to check into that to see if you're eligible for that. So this is our way we can protect ourselves is by being proactive, being diligent. It's sad to say, but we are literally at war with these crazy folks. They spend all day trying to figure out some kind of way to steal your identity or hack your information. So we just have to be mindful of what we're up against. Shopping for a car? Applying for a job? Looking for a home? Or just getting your financial house in order? Then it's time to check your credit report. Good news! It's free! 
The law entitles you to one free copy of your credit report from each of the three nationwide credit reporting companies every 12 months. Why is it important to check your credit report? It has important information about your financial accounts, how you pay your bills, and if you file for bankruptcy. You want to make sure everything is accurate, especially before you buy a house or a car or apply for a job. If you notice something wrong, contact the credit reporting company and business providing the information to correct the error. And checking your report can help you guard against identity theft. Visit ftc.gov slash ID theft if you spot accounts that aren't yours. How do you order your free credit report? Order online from annualcreditreport.com the only authorized website for free credit reports or call 1-877-322-8228. You'll need to provide your name, address, social security number, and date of birth to verify your identity. Keep in mind, you're entitled to one free copy of your credit report every 12 months from each of the three nationwide credit reporting companies. So the next time someone asks, how's your credit? You'll have the answer. To order your free credit report, visit annualcreditreport.com or call 1-877-322-8228. Breaking news. What is a credit report? I have created this little presentation to talk about the credit report and the information is from the Federal Reserve. Um, it's very important to understand what your credit report is and the impact that you personally have on your own credit report. Irregardless of all of the breaches and all of the things that go on and now with the new laws and rules we have to protect consumers is much easier to get fraudulent information off of your credit file. It's been a nightmare for many people through the years to try to keep their credit report accurate. It has been an absolute nightmare. But we must do all we can to keep crazy things off of our credit report. As military personnel, that's why how you handle your money is so important. What you do affects what goes on your credit report and it will definitely come back to haunt you. A credit report is your digital life. Basically it just tells someone else everything you do in regards to how you handle your money. Do you pay your bills on time? Do you not pay your bills on time? So this is very important that you recognize that this document is not going anywhere. It's going to be there and people are going to continue to report your activities. So to maintain a good security clearance, to maintain good due diligence on the base or in your position, you want to make sure that your credit report stays up to date and is a good credit report to the best of your ability. A credit report is a record of your credit history. It is under attack, not only from outside sources like data breaches, you know, identity theft and all of this other stuff, but things we ourselves do. Sometimes we are our worst enemy and as military personnel, what this little class is all about is to help you understand to manage your money and how to keep your credit report, uh, how can I say this, without too many dings and crazy things on it that can actually be avoided. The first item on your credit report is your identity, and that comprises your name, address, full or partial social security number, date of birth, and possible employment information. When you print your credit report out, that's how they determine that it is you by using those items.
the next component will be your existing credit. This is the information about the credit you have, your credit cards, your accounts, your mortgages, car loans, student loans, and it also includes the terms of your credit, how much you owe your creditors, and your history of making payments. This is the part that can get us ding us and cause our credit report to have negative items on it. So all of this stuff appears under the portion of your credit report that is existing credit. The next item on your credit report is public record information. This is the stuff about court judgments against you or taxes that liens that haven't been paid on property or whether you file bankruptcy. All of these will appear. The new laws that are now in place require before these items can appear on your credit report, they must have adequate information to determine that it is you. It must include your name, your social security number, your birthday. This must be on there now, else they cannot place it on your credit report. Another component is inquiries. This is a section on your credit report. This comes from people requesting copies of your credit report. There are soft ones and then there's what they call hard inquiries. The hard inquiries have impact on your credit score. That is if you're applying for many credit cards or credit in department stores, or those are considered hard credit inquiries. If you just request your credit report, that's considered a soft request and it does not impact your credit score. Handling your credit is so very important. Your credit report is important because lenders, insurers, and employers have the right to access your credit file. They're actually checking how you manage your financial responsibility. As a military personnel, this is very, very important because it affects your readiness as this class is all about. It's about being prepared to do due diligence in regards to your credit so you won't have to worry about your financial responsibility. You will have good skills and so when your report is reviewed, it will not be a lot of negative stuff on there. Why is your credit report important? Lenders may use your credit report information to decide whether you can get a loan. Insurance companies use it to decide if they will actually give you insurance and at what rate you will pay. Employers can check your credit report before hiring you to decide if they will even offer you a job. Continuing on with why your credit report is important, one, telephone and utility companies use it. Landlords use it to see if they will even rent to you. Your credit report is just not going anywhere. It's going to be here. The best thing to do is to learn the necessary tools so that you can govern your life, so that you can have a positive credit report, something that will not impact you negatively. So who collects <laughs> and reports credit information about me? This is a full-time job, as you can see this guy running around on this clock up here. The people who collect our information, and it comes from multiple sources, but it's a never-ending process. The three major credit bureaus gather the information they receive and they store this information and then they in turn compile a report about you and then they provide that report that they have created to people who are seeking information on you about your credit worthiness, how you pay your bills and stuff so they can make a decision on whether to give you credit. 
Where do credit bureaus get their information? This is very important for you to understand. That is just not some vague way they collect their information. They have many resources that provide them with the information about you to create your credit report. Credit bureaus get information from your creditors, banks, cardholders, auto finance companies, public records. Each credit bureau gets their information from different sources. That's why it is so important for you to check all three credit reports because what's on Equifax may not be on TransUnion. Who else is allowed to see my credit report? This is where you want to be mindful on how you leave your information around. I know legally there are certain people that can get your credit report, but you want to make sure you don't leave copies of your credit report just laying around. When you get a copy, you want to keep this information secure. Just this little, little pirate is sitting here. There's always someone seeking your information to use it against you, like identity theft or stuff. So when you're on post or wherever you're le living, do not leave this kind of confidential information out where people can see it or show it to somebody and discussing it unless it's somebody, you know, at the bank or somebody that's assisting you with your credit report. Lenders for whom you are seeking credit they will run your credit report lenders that have granted you credit in the past and many organizations that provide service such as telephone cell phone utility companies they would use your credit report to determine if you have to pay a deposit and how much when you're seeking a job if it requires a security clearance they will run your credit report to see what is on there and if you would be considered a security risk if your credit is really bad Insurance companies will run your credit to find out if your policy should be set at a certain rate. And government agencies check in on your financial status for like, you know, benefits and that type of thing. And also other businesses that need this information. A landlord will run your credit report to see if you have evictions or any other issues in rentals or purchasing of a home. A bank account would check to see if you have a lot of bad checks or you've got dings on there from some check reporting agency that you've been writing hot checks or you had a lot of overdrafts. So it's very important to take care of your credit report. Does the credit bureau decide whether to grant me credit? Many times we have been so mad like this guy on the plank with the sword. We are so mad because we think it's the credit bureau's fault that we did not get a credit card or a bank loan or a car loan. But the credit bureau does not determine whether you get credit. They only provide the report. No, credit bureaus as I said before, do not do that. They only provide the report to the lenders. They're the ones who decide whether to grant you credit based on what's on that credit report. I just encourage you to go to your a personal financial manager if your credit report is messed up. Try to work that thing out. The laws now are much more conducive to fixing your credit report. If you had things on there before, now is the time to fix it because the laws are much better for consumers. How long does negative information such as late payments stay on my credit report? Late payments are something we can control, and yet we want to know how soon would they fall off. If you find yourself unable to pay a bill, contact the company. Let them know that you're having problems. Thus, they will not report it as a late payment when they turn in their notices to the credit bureau agency. They do that usually once a month. So this is something you can control. You want to do your due diligence if the payments gonna be late call the company let them know you know before you get paid if you're gonna have the money so you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and give these people a call if the situation will reverse and somebody owed you money promised to pay you at a certain date you looking for that money where well, these companies 
want their money just because they're big you signed a contract you made a promise to fulfill an obligation on a certain date so you need to maintain your honor and respect and live up to your obligations so late payments should only be things you do out of emergency not because you just spent the money on something else and they can wait that's going on your credit report that is not something you want to play with For the most part, things stay on for seven years. Personal bankruptcies can stay on for 10. Lawsuits or judgments, unpaid judgments and things like this can stay on seven years or until statute of limitation runs out, whichever is longer, dependent on the state. And any kind of criminal convictions can stay on your credit report indefinitely. This is a hard one. What can I do if I am denied credit? insurance or employment because of something in my credit report what can I do if I receive less favorable credit terms than other consumers because of something in my credit report this is something that plagues us all if you are trying to buy a car while you're still in the military and something happens and you get denied credit for whatever reason or maybe you're trying to take out an insurance policy Whatever reason you're denied for, you have a right to receive a free credit report, but you must request it within 60 days. And the information has to be on there, the information in regards to the negative item that caused you to be denied. In addition, lenders may use a credit report to set the terms of credit. This is this is this is crazy, but this is how it works. So you say like it says on this slide, if a lender offers you terms less favorable, for example, at a higher rate than the terms offered to consumers with better credit history based on information in your credit report, the lender may give you a notice. This is another time where you can get information from the credit bureau. Information about the credit bureau that provided the information. If the information is negative, you have a right to know why it's negative. It's not that just they just can't deny you or tell you you got some exorbitant credit rate and nobody tells you why. Not anymore. The new laws are now much more on the consumer side. And if you get something like that, I know I sound like a broken record, please go to personnel financial manager. Go over there and talk to them and find out what's going on on your credit report. So it just, I know it's tiring in the way the system is now. Your credit report is your digital life. So this is something you want to be in touch with <laughs> like a good friend. You want to know what's on there yearly and if you have any kind of problems with the new laws. Now, if you do a dispute, you are entitled to another credit report to show that the issues have been corrected so you have options so if you receive these notices like it was talking about before by errors on your credit report you have the right to check into that you know that's so important this is a kind of a, the guy that wrote the article is kind of repeating himself again it's so important to stay on top of the credit report errors and they give you these little little article here it tells you there's this little book Federal Reserve five tips for improving your credit score and here's the the link here federalreserve.gov consumer info slash five tips underscore credit score dot htm so there is so much out there for you but you must stay on top of your credit report I cannot emphasize that enough the things that started out where the little guys were sliding down the roof there that is so real all of your information can be stolen you can be your own worst enemy like the little pirates you can cause yourself more problems by how you pay your bills and the things you do so if you want a good report and you want to make sure you're not running around trying to correct errors on the port and then come to find out it's it can't be taken off because it's an actual legitimate problem then that's something you've done to yourself so you have to realize your credit report is not going away 
I don't know how to emphasize that enough. This thing is going to follow you the rest of your life. So if you're here in this video and you're new to the military, you're young and you're just starting out with your credit, if you've unfortunately gotten a whole bunch of credit cards that they sent you in the mail, now that you're in the military, people offering you credit and all of this stuff, go to your financial planner. Take some classes. You're just starting out. You don't have to be crippled by debt. So get out of that. Get rid of those credit cards. Live within your means. And remember, your credit report is not going anywhere. Breaking news about your credit report is, as the Federal Reserve has said, it lists all of these things, but it also shows you at the very end there are many tips that they have on their website to help you. But as a military person, as a young person, woman or man in the military credit reports are here to stay you must do your due diligence you must bring your credit in line with what your income is I cannot emphasize that enough your credit report is not going anywhere it is your digital life so you want to become very familiar like an old friend like I said just a moment ago you want to know it very well and you want to do all you can do so that this digital life and your real life will work hand in hand Okay, we're going to be talking about responding to an identity theft. You have been compromised, your stuff is, you've been victimized, and your stuff is out there in cyberspace. You want to first contact all the companies you do business with and make them aware of the fraud. Close the accounts. Lock everything down. Then you want to visit identitytheft.gov. They've got a whole uh, process that you do online. You fill it out and then you print it for your records. And then you want to place a fraud alert on your credit report. That's what the, the little lesson says. Me, personally, we're going to do a little sidebar here. I don't do fraud alerts. If your identity has been compromised, you want to put a freeze on your credit report. Uh, I just was looking at some stuff on the Federal Trade Commission and some new laws are coming into place with the credit reporting agencies. They're now offering, I think it starts next year, free freezes on your credit report without any charge to active duty military. I think that's great. They should have been doing it. But this is what I would do. If you have been compromised, put a freeze. You will get this little thing. It's a code they give you. And then to lift it, you have to use the code if you want to buy something. And then you use the code to put it back on. If you have been compromised, I think that's your most secure way. Because no one will be able to get at your social security number or your file. But with a fraud alert, creditors can still see it. Get a credit report. Look for strange stuff on that credit report to see if there's something there that you do not recognize. And use that when you go to identitytheft.gov. That will help you too. The next person you want to contact, in fact, I would contact him first as soon as you find out, will be he or she, your commanding officer. Make sure you notify them immediately because if you have a security clearance and someone has your identity, that could be some serious stuff. And you may possibly lose your security clearance and wait till all that stuff gets cleared up and then be reevaluated again. Somebody took it away from me in a blink of an eye in less than a month. This woman destroyed what I had worked for for 15 years. I mean, your credit score is basically all you have. I was mugged. They got my information. It can really negatively affect your life. Then they went off with the information and be basically became me. I feel it's a loss of control that someone's out there pretending to be you and doing things in your name that can come back to haunt you. Somebody was using my name and all my personal data. They'd done it all. I just didn't even know where to start. They had a, a long record. It's a terrible feeling. Identity theft. It happens when your personal information is stolen and used without your knowledge. It's a serious crime that can cost you time and money, ruin your credit, and destroy your good name. When I was a victim of identity theft, my mail had been stolen. 
I was shopping at a, at a grocery store and someone took my wallet. I think I made a purchase and they stole all my debit card information. Uh, my briefcase had been, had been tampered with and I, when I looked in it I saw that my passport and my uh, driver's license which I had in there had been taken. Identity theft happens when someone takes information about you and then uses it to commit fraud. Identity theft is, is very serious. We know that identity fraud in its various forms has affected 10 million people in any given year. And what that means in dollars is that it's a loss to businesses of about $50 billion. On top of that, victims of identity theft have spent $5 billion trying to undo this harm. Everyone needs to be conscious that identity theft is real. When you get news that your identity has been potentially stolen, it's very, it's sort of this open-ended problem that has occurred and you don't know what's going to come of it. No one's immune, which isn't to say that we're powerless. There's a lot we can do to deter, detect, and defend ourselves. My identity was stolen when I was mugged. It is pretty traumatic, especially uh, the, how it happened to me. They got my information and it happened. Then they went off with the information and be basically became me when they went to charging items in stores. Identity thieves can only take advantage of you if you give them information or if they obtain information about you. So what you want to do is take steps to make it less likely that your information falls into the wrong hands. There are many ways that you can do that. And the first is to stop and look in your wallet. What are you carrying around? And if you lose your wallet, are you giving somebody else an opportunity to commit identity theft? So avoid carrying around any identification that has your social security number on it in your wallet because that can be used very easily and efficiently by identity thieves. They could have your name, they could have your birth date, but if they don't have their, your social security number, they're not going to get very far. But all they really need is a social security number and they can misspell your name and still get credit. The only place that social security card number should be is in your head and protect it somewhere at home where you keep your other valuables. And if someone asks you to provide a social security number, ask them why they need it. Um, how they're going to keep it, how they're going to safeguard it, because you don't want that number to fall into the wrong hands. I had an incident that I thought was a valid uh, reason to give out information until they asked for my social security number. I went as far as the first three digits. I thought, gee, they don't need that. And then I hung up. This is a crime. You have to think when you're at home, protect your identity. Don't leave around your personal documents, your date of birth. Somebody could come into your home and have immediate access to that information. You also have to be careful about your trash. Now, a lot of people routinely receive things in the mail, maybe bank statements, credit card statements, or health insurance forms, and if they don't need them, they just throw them away in the trash. They shouldn't do that. Everyone should invest in a shredder. So before they dispose of these critical documents, you shred them. Identity thieves, don't worry about getting their hands dirty. They will go through your trash to retrieve these documents. They go where the information is. They'll steal your mail, they will steal your trash, They'll steal your wallet, and that's how they get information about you. Deter identity theft. Protect your social security number. Shred financial documents and paperwork with any personal information before you throw them out. Never give out personal information on the phone or internet unless you know who you are dealing with. My name is Nicole M. Robinson. The woman who stole my identity, her name is Nicole A. Robinson. She stole my information from the pharmaceutical company that she works for. After this happened, it devastated my financial life. I ordered my credit reports, and I received a credit report in the mail that was 54 pages long. It had over 170 accounts, 140 of them were in collections. It had 42 different names and 65 different addresses on it. Not only was somebody else reaping the benefits of my good credit, I could no longer have access to my own good credit. And I cried. I cried every day for three months. On top of the financial and the time that people spend in resolving these issues, it's an emotional burden on victims. My life before the identity theft case was wonderful. In less than a month, this woman destroyed what I had worked for for 15 years. She got my life. If an identity thief uses, for example, your social security number and applies for new credit in your name as opposed to rating an existing account, there may be no way for you to know about it uh, unless you've checked your credit report and you see that a new account that you didn't even know about has been opened in your name. That's why it's very important to monitor your credit report regularly. Detect identity theft. Check your credit report at annualcreditreport.com. 
Federal law gives you the right to a free credit report every year from the three national consumer reporting companies. Review your financial accounts regularly. Look for charges you did not make. When someone realizes that they're a victim of identity theft, it's like getting a kick in the gut. You know, you feel paralyzed for a moment, but it's really essential for victims to move quickly and deliberately in starting to resolve the problems that arise from identity theft. I did what everybody knows to do, and that's call your credit card companies and cancel your credit cards. However, that's not enough. There was one major um, bit of information I did not have, and that was to call the three major credit bureaus. And I did not do that. And what happened was this person then went, went back. She was able to reopen the credit cards that I canceled. She was also able to um, open new credit cards in my name. If you find you've become a victim of identity theft, the first thing you need to do is contact one of the three major credit reporting agencies and have them put a fraud alert on your file. You gotta take it seriously. You even suspect it, you gotta put fraud alerts on. You gotta take the steps to protect yourself. And you gotta inform yourself about what to do so that when it does happen to you, you can do it quickly because time is critical. You next want to contact each of the creditors or other institutions where your information has been misused. Then you follow up in writing and dispute these accounts and get a letter from them resolving these disputed fraudulent accounts. The FTC has an affidavit, which in my case I used, to write out your explanation of what happened that you can then use to submit to creditors trying to collect on fraudulent accounts. When you're trying to tell them, look, my identity was stolen, it helps prove it to them. You next want to contact your local police department, report the crime, and get a copy of the police report. You should contact the police immediately, because otherwise uh, you have no proof that there was a crime. It's very important that you report it to the police, because there are certain agencies that you need or we recommend that you contact, and they're probably going to refer you back to uh, the police department to see if you have a police report or not. And finally, you need to contact the Federal Trade Commission online at ftc.gov slash ID theft or call us toll free at 877 ID theft to report this to us. Defend against identity theft. Call the three credit reporting companies and place a fraud alert on your credit report. Then ask for the free credit report you're entitled to. Close any accounts that you suspect have been tampered with or opened fraudulently. Start by calling the security or fraud department of each company, follow up in writing, and include copies of supporting documents. File a police report. Contact the FTC. Your information also helps law enforcement officials across the country to track down and stop ID thieves. Let's treat our personal information as we would our cash. Let's safeguard it, whether we're at home, whether it's in our purse or our wallet, or at our office. Your personal information is cash, and in the wrong hands, it can destroy your life. The FTC plays a central role in helping victims avoid and recover from identity theft. So we have developed substantial consumer education material that's available on our website at ftc.gov slash ID theft. Identity theft is serious, but even if your identity has been stolen and there has been you know, fraudulent accounts open to your name, you can defend yourself and get those resolved in your favor. There are times when you just do not want to finish and you just want to say, you know, forget it, I can't do this anymore. Um, but you have to find that way inside of you to just keep going because this is something that if you don't clear, it definitely affects the rest of your life. What I want is for us to create a culture of security for our personal information so that this crime in the future will be diminished greatly. When Thomas got his credit card statement, he wasn't worried. He had finally paid off his bill, so he knew he didn't owe any money. But when Thomas looked at his statement, he found thousands of dollars in charges he didn't recognize. Someone stole his identity. So Thomas got busy. He called his credit card company right away. Then he looked online to find out what else he needed to do. First, Thomas called one of the three credit reporting companies and asked them to put a fraud alert on his credit report. Then he called all three of the credit reporting companies to ask for a free copy of his credit report. He knew they have to give them to victims of identity theft. Finally, Thomas started his identity theft report. He called the Federal Trade Commission and talked with a counselor about what happened to him. 
the counselor put all of Thomas's information into a report called an identity theft affidavit. Then the counselor emailed Thomas a link so he could save and print his report. Thomas took his identity theft affidavit to the police station to file a police report. He told the police what happened. They wrote a report and gave him a copy of his official police report. Thomas's identity theft affidavit plus his police report together made up his identity theft report. He kept it in a safe place. He probably will need to use it again. Thomas had a lot more to do to stop the damage the identity thief had caused, but because he acted so fast in the beginning, it all turned out okay in the end. I created this little slide from just information from the Federal Trade Commission's website about signs of identity theft. You see withdrawals from your bank account that are not yours. This is a sign. They may make no fraudulent charges. They may not do anything else, but they may have just took a lot of money out of your account. Nothing else. You don't get your bill. This is a time when people get the happy feeling. Oh, I don't have to pay. I don't have a bill, so I don't have to pay. I'm so sorry to tell you. If you don't get a bill, you're still responsible. <laughs> you have to call the people you didn't get the bill from and find out what's going on. Because all of your mail now could be going to an identity thief's house. So you want to call. Debt collectors call you about debts that aren't yours. This is common with identity theft. So you want to immediately take care of this. You want to talk to this debt collector. You want to get all the information you can. And you want to make sure that you get it in writing. Something with a signature, not just some crazy printout. Because that's a form of fraud as well. So you want to get an actual copy of the, the contract or whatever was signed by you or the, by the fraudulent person so that you can take this to your legal assistance office and have them help you with this. Now the IRS notifies you that one tax return was filed in your name. This this is this is so sad cuz it was so bad the last few years, but now between the IRS and other government agencies they have really brought this under control. So you want to definitely look into that. That is a serious sign of identity theft. Sometimes that's all they steal is your IRS identity. Okay, you get a notice that your information was compromised from a company. That's important too. You know, it's so sad the times we live in, but you have to be proactive. You are a military personnel, so you have to be attuned to your credit report. You have to know what the process is. If anything goes wrong with your credit, you must be able to respond concisely and quickly and thoroughly. It's not one of those happenstance things. You need to know it well. When you in basic, they teach you how to survive, how to use your, your weapon, all the tools you need to perform your duties to the highest function. This is what this identity theft is all about. This is what this class is all about, to teach you the skills so you can respond at the highest level. Now, you probably have a big fat wallet. I see some people wallet three inches thick. Get a safe at home. Lock up your personal information, like your credit reports and stuff. You should have a file cabinet that you can lock and that's not easily breached. And keep your information in there. And the stuff in your wallet, you should never have stuff with your social security number on it. And you only need a driver's license or maybe one credit card. Do not carry that type of information. You are an identity theft's greatest gift. Because he can have your name, your information. But that social security number as you saw in that one video is key so do well and do your due diligence okay we're gonna be taking a look at these imposter scams identity theft we can do what we can do our due diligence protecting our information and all of that and still become a victim of identity theft but looking through these imposter scams we do not have to be taken advantage of when we understand how they work Imposter scams appear to come from someone you know, okay? Somebody calling you on the phone, 
pressuring you for money or send money quickly or grandma done failed and can't get up and you need to wire money and all of this crazy stuff they want you to be fearful that somebody's going to be coming to hurt your family members or they're stranded somewhere or something serious is going on that will affect you negatively so they putting the pressure on you want you to do it right away do not wire somebody money without verifying the story call a family member call someone before you wire a dime to somebody you don't know or or follow through you know just do your due diligence all right common versions here is what the little lesson gives us here are some interesting ones Distressed friend or family in need. Oh, I'm broke down on the side of the road. Grandma done fell and can't get up. We need to take her to the emergency room. Could you wire us $200? They're all on the phone. Oh, I got to go. The ambulance is here. Oh, no, 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 no. One video I watched, this lady is a true story. She had got a call by her son being uh, away at college, and he had got hurt. Well, when she called her daughter, come to find out her son was not at school. So it's important to do your due diligence before you do that. Or you get one of these crazy IRS calls. They tell you you have outstanding debt. The IRS will never contact you first by phone for a payment. They send in you loads of mail. They'll send you certified information and, and everything you need. And they're not going to ask you for your credit card payment over the phone. That's another red flag. All right. This next one, free money from the government. Now, I know I'm old and everything, but I've never heard of the government giving free money. They don't even want to give you your, your income tax return back. This, this to me is, is crazy. Uh, that you want a grant or you're getting a grant. Uh, they're giving you a free grant and all you got to do is send some fees to get the grant. I just have issues with free money from the government. To me, it's automatically a scam. Even if I had something like that going on, I probably wouldn't get it because I would be thinking it was fake. But if they ask you for money to get grants or something special you don't want or something that the government is giving you and they talk about some kind of processing fee, you already know that that's a scam. All right. Now, the computer virus alert thing is kind of crazy. Uh, that one's kind of dangerous. This is when people... You know, they call you, say, well, we done figured out that your computer has a virus and you get this little thing popping up on your computer. Never click on that junk. That is a virus. And people will take over your machine and lock your machine and then you will have to pay them to buy their product for your machine to work again. So you never click on those little things. How does this thing know that you have a, a virus on your computer? I get them things all the time. Make your computer run faster stuff. I don't even. I got so many filters on my computer. That stuff don't show up. But anyway, you don't click on all them little boxes to make your computer run faster or something telling you you got a virus on your machine. And it's not from the virus program that you own. It's some other off-brand company. Once you connect to these people, then you're going to end up having to pay money to get your computer back. Okay. Online dating interests. Is requesting money well I don't know how you ladies and gentlemen take that you know I've never met you I don't know you we just met online I'm not saying there's anything wrong with online dating there are many people who are very happy who met online but that's something you definitely need to check into you know that's those kinds of things that you sure enough got to do your due diligence and especially if you wire money to Kenya or some France or some other foreign country that's not a good thing but anyway, this is just, I got a couple more videos. I got several that I want you to really pay attention to. They touch on all these little schemes, and it shows you more detail on how they work. So pay attention. And if you have to, roll it back and then play it again. Because if you understand how it works, then you won't get tricked. Scam artists are pretending to be IRS officials to get your money. They'll call, email, or text you, claiming you owe back taxes or there's a problem with your tax return. They even rig caller ID to make the call look official. They play on your fears. They threaten to take your driver's license or sue, arrest, or deport you. They want you to pay fast. What's the truth? The truth is the IRS's first contact with you will always be a letter in the mail. It's not a phone call, email, or text message. 
They won't insist that you pay with a prepaid debit card, a wire transfer, or cashier's check. Now you know. Has an IRS imposter contacted you? Report it at ftc.gov slash imposters. Scammers pose as big-name companies. They call or send pop-up messages to scare you about the security of your computer. We've gotten warnings of viruses in your area. Your computer has been affected. First, download this software so I can delete the dangerous program. They're good at pretending to be someone they're not because they want something that isn't theirs, your money. No matter what they say, they haven't found anything wrong with your machine. They just want you to pay for software or tech support services you don't need. If someone pressures you, slow down and think it through. Don't give out your financial information and don't let anyone take control of your computer. Report imposter scams to ftc.gov slash imposters. Looking for love in all the right places? Like popular dating sites, mobile apps, and social networking sites? Ron seems like a perfect match for you. He's thoughtful and says he can't live without you. He says he's from the US but works out of the country. He says he wants to visit but says he can't afford it. He asks you to send him money. Last month it was medical bills for his sick aunt. This month he needs money to fix his car. Next month, who knows? Ron wants your money. Don't send it. The person pretending to be Ron is a scammer. He'll tell you anything to get you to wire cash right away. He'll never run out of excuses. If an online love interest asks you for money, walk away, no matter how compelling the story. Report scams at ftc.gov slash imposters. Lisa finally won the lottery. The caller told her, you've won millions. Now just wire $400 for taxes. Eddie sold his camera online, but the buyer sent Eddie a check for more than the selling price. He asked Eddie to wire him the extra cash. Henry found a listing for the perfect rental house. The owner told him to wire the deposit and she would send the house keys. Anita's grandson called to say his wallet was stolen in London. He begged her to send money, but not to tell his mom. What happens next? Well, Lisa sent the $400 to collect her lottery prize, but she never got her winnings. She lost $400. Eddie called his bank. They said the cashier's check was probably fake, and they were right. Eddie didn't deposit the check, he didn't send the money back, and he sold his camera to someone else. Henry wired the deposit for his perfect house. He never got the keys, and when he went to the house, the owner told him it wasn't even for rent. Henry lost his deposit. Anita called her daughter. Her grandson was in college 50 miles from home, not in London, and he wasn't the one who called her. Both Eddie and Anita knew to investigate before sending money. Lisa and Henry learned to do that for the future. In each one of those scams for those people reaching out with all of their little tricks, the one part in there that was consistent with all of them was that you have to give your consent to be the victim. You have to wire the money. You have to deposit the check. You have to do the part that makes you a victim. So when you see the little flashing lights or little buzzers going off in your head or something is telling you this just doesn't sound right, believe it. Take the time to do your due diligence and find out what's really going on. Thank you so much for taking part 5A of the Military Consumer Toolkit class. The next one would be part 5B, which covers protecting personal information. Look forward to seeing you there. Have a great day.